Today's topic is density or specific gravity as the MSDS would classify it as. We're gonna have a little bit of fun with uh, different objects floating today or sinking. By the end of this video, you should be able to determine whether or not an object will float or sink based upon its density. And just a quick reminder, don't be so dense. The timeline for today's lesson, first and foremost, we're going to explain why the heck I look like that, and also what that is, and why that happens in the first place, using density. But first, let's have a little bit of story time about Archimedes. Archimedes was a Greek mathematician who died in 212 BC, rip. Archimedes, but he is the person who is coined with that typical Eureka phrase. And the reason that came about is because he was tasked by the king to determine whether or not the goldsmith had cheated the king on making his gold crown. So the goldsmith had been given a pile of gold. King said, hey, make my gold crown goldsmith person. And the goldsmith person then took that gold made the crown, gave it back to the king, but the king was suspicious and said, no, I think this goldsmith is up to something fishy. He stole some of that gold and replaced it with something different, maybe silver, something less valuable, and put that in my crown. So he said, hey, Archimedes, do me a favor, bro. I want you to go and figure out if the goldsmith cheated me. Did he actually make my crown pure gold or did he put something else in there and pocket some of that gold for himself? But there's a catch, Archimedes. You can't hurt the crown, you can't scratch the crown, you can't break the crown, you can't do anything that would damage the crown. So Archimedes was tasked with this um, almost impossible task at the time. Until, of course, that is one day, he was taking a lovely little Epsom salt soak bath. I'm just kidding, I don't know. Maybe he had bubble baths and a rubber ducky floating in there. Who knows? I know I would have a rubber ducky if it was me. Anyways, so he's taking a bath. He sits down in the water and he notices that the water level rises. And this is that time where he goes, Eureka! Because he figured out, oh wait, the amount that the water rises is the amount of my body inside the water. And that became known as the Archimedes Principle. So that principle of using the water displacement or how much the water rises when you put something in it to measure an object's density is Archimedes Principle. So it was at this time that Archimedes purportedly jumped out of the tub, running through the streets naked, screaming, Eureka, because he figured out, hey, I can just put the crown in a water bath and see how much it displaces the water, how much the water rises to determine the density of gold and to see whether or not that goldsmith had cheated the king out of his gold coins in the crown and therefore solved the king's problems. So using the same kind of logic that Archimedes stumbled across in his nice little bubble bath soap with his rubber duck, let's look at some other objects and see whether they will float or sink in terms of density. If something is more dense than water, it should sink. If something is less dense than water, it should float on top of it. So let's test some of these objects that I've got assorted here. And um, we'll, we'll take a little visit back to Archimedes' time and see what, what he would have thought about this whole thing. Ah, oh, yes, thank you, Dakanta, for the wonderful intro. This is Archimedes here, and we are going to be looking at whether objects float or sink. What do you think? That is indeed a part of density, which is what I am known for. Eureka! Let us take a look into this float or sink concept and apply this density right away. We have here a container of water and we're going to place objects in this water and see if it floats or sinks. As you can see on this container, I have black Sharpies written right there. So you can see if the water line rises when I add objects to the water. Now when things are added to the water, the water will rise because of water displacement. And that is how I determined that the goldsmith had cheated the king and he was beheaded. Let us begin. First, we will try a frozen tomato. Float or sink? It sunk. We will try a not frozen tomato. 
Clothes are sink. It is sort of floating, but sunk underneath the water, not fully floating. We have a frozen banana. No peel. Float or sink? What do you think? And it is floating. Indeed, it is floating on top of the water. Lovely. Lovely. And we notice that the water line is rising past the Sharpie from water displacement according to the density of the object added to the water. We now have an ice cube. Float or sink? And we see it floats on top of the water. Does not sink. Because ice, as it is frozen water, expands and floats on top of itself. Becomes less dense, that is why it floats. How about an apple? Ah uh, yes, an apple. Float or sink? In this case, the water level has risen quite a lot because the apple is quite large. And uh, it is sunk in this small amount of water. How about an empty soda can? Limoncello flavor, very good. It floats. It is less dense than water. Next in our floating experimentation, let us try an orange. Float or sink, what do you think? Ah, yes, well, in this small amount of water, it appears to sink. However, if I had more water, we would have to try again and see if it floats, like in a bathtub or something. Ah, yes, indeed, the orange floats because it just was not enough water in the previous container. And now to also test the apple in the greater amount of water. Ah, yes, indeed, it also floats just as the orange does. Notice that the water level did rise. How about this wax candle? Float or sink? It is floating. Floating on top of the water. How about this ping pong ball? Float or sink? It floats on top of the water. It is less dense than water. How about this rock that I found in my backyard. A rock, float or sink. It sinks down to the bottom. It is more dense than water. And this piece of wood, will it float or sink? It floats. It floats on top of the water. It is less dense than water. How about scrunched up aluminum ball? Ah, it floats less dense than water. And last but not least, a pumice stone. Necessary for cleaning your toilets at home. That nasty ring around the toilet. Yes, indeed. In my day, there were no toilets. We just pooped in a hole in the ground. Okay, so now this is a pumice stone. Will it float or sink? Let us see. Ah, it floats. Flotar. It is floating on top of the water. It is less dense than water. So what was the point of this whole thing anyways? Well, first and foremost, to see that things do float and some things do sink in water. There are two different things and that is because of the density, whether or not it floats or sinks relative to the density of water itself. Now, the other thing that's important here is that we can see that each time we add things to the water, the water level changes. That is water displacement. And because of that, I was able to determine that the goldsmith was a cheater and he stole the king's gold from his crown. So what can we do with this information? We will turn that back over to Decanta and she will tell you what you can do with it. Ah, yes, thank you for that send off, Archimedes. Good to have you back. So what is the point of that? What was the point of Archimedes' visit to us? The point was to tie it back into the MSDS lesson from before. Now, MSDS stands for Material Safety Data Sheet, and using Material Safety Data Sheets, we can determine the specific gravity or the density of objects. So we already have a lot of these numbers, these values, 
documented for different chemicals and different objects. So what we were looking at there, the orange, the apple, the wax candle, wood, rocks, just a bunch of aluminum, all those things you can find the specific gravity number value for in an MSDS. So last lesson, we looked at the MSDS value for rubbing alcohol, which we determined to be 0 0.7850 grams per milliliter. And then we looked up the MSDS for water and found the specific gravity value to be one gram per milliliter. And finally, we checked out corn syrup's MSDS and looked for its density or specific gravity and found that to be 1.4 grams per milliliter. Now with this information, we already know that if something is more dense than water, it will sink. And if something is less dense than water, it will float. So what we can now see is that if we have a numerical value that is less than one, it should float. If it is greater than one, it should sink. Where did I get this one from? The one is water's density. Water has a density of one, one gram per milliliter, which makes it a great baseline. So any numerical value that's less than one is going to float on top of water because it's less dense than water. Anything that's greater than one is going to be more dense than water and will therefore sink in water. So a really cool thing you can do with that information is literally stack things on top of each other according to their densities, which I have done for you here. So I'll try and show you that there. So literally these are three separate chemicals. Hold on, there we go. There's three separate chemicals right there. The bottom one is going to be the most dense the middle is water with just blue food coloring, just a drop of blue food coloring in it so you can see the difference. And the top is something that's less dense than water. Those are three separate liquids completely separated from each other purely based on their densities. So the bottom is which chemical? What do you think? The bottom is the most dense, so it would be the corn syrup, 1.4 grams per milliliter. So this bottom right here is corn syrup. The middle blue is our water. And this top is the 0 0.7850 grams per milliliter isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol floating on top. And it's floating because it's less dense. So be like isopropyl alcohol, don't be so dense. So the summary thus far is that density and specific gravity are synonymous words for each other. We also know that things that are less dense will float on top, less dense, i.e. smaller than one, if we're trying to float things on water. And anything that is greater than one will sink in water. Again, if you we were, water is our baseline here. So if you were trying to float something on top of isopropyl alcohol, you would need something that is less dense than 0 0.7850 grams per milliliter. So it depends on what you're trying to float or sink objects in as well. The next thing I'd like to talk about are those units, those grams per milliliter. What the heck? Density has units of grams per milliliter. Just like when you step on a scale at home, you have units of pounds. Or when you're driving your car and there's a speed limit on the road, there's units of miles per hour if you're in the United States. Because here in America, we reject the Imperial Majesty's standard units of metric systemness. Let's break down these units then. The units imply that every object has mass, grams, which we know the orange has mass, has grams. The candle wax has mass, grams. The apple has mass, grams. You have mass, grams. So anything that you can weigh on a scale has mass, has grams. So every object has a certain mass. Then what we also notice is that every time we added an object to the water, the volume of the water went up. So the overall volume changed based on water displacement. So that mass changed the amount of volume we saw in the container, so the water level rised. 
Therefore, we can also determine that each object has volume, that mass and volume both tie into density. Therefore, the units for density are grams per milliliter. So those two things in tandem are what defines density. Just like when you're driving your car, the speed limit is defined by miles per hour, with miles being above hour, miles per hour. Likewise, for density, we have units of grams per milliliter on the bottom. Knowing your units in chemistry can make or break your problem, and not only in chemistry, but in real world scenarios as well. We're gonna go over conversions, so converting miles per hour to kilometers per hour, or you know other basic conversions that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, especially if you like to travel, because if you ever want to leave the United States, the rest of the world does not function on cups and pounds and miles per hour. Anyhow, so conversions are really important and knowing your units are super important. And that's the reason why we need to know our density units here, our grams per milliliter, and how we can convert those in a later video. And just for funsies, if you have these items at home, honey, whole milk, corn syrup, water, vegetable oil, isopropyl alcohol, and maybe you have some lamp oil. I don't know, you've got like tiki torches or something in the backyard, whatever. I'm not asking questions. But if you have those items at home, it's really fun to check out their densities. They all have different densities. And you can stack them on top of each other, just like I did here. So if you're really careful and you make sure that you don't disturb each layer, you can get all of those liquids on top of each other. And they look really, really cool. I highly encourage you to try it, to do it. I've done it before. It takes a lot of patience, especially when you get to the ones where the densities are very close in values. Um, but doing something like this is pretty straightforward. You, you can't mess this one up very easily. So if you want to try one just in general, just for funsies, I also encourage this is like the um, this is like the basic level. What's behind me over there? That's like the master level. You have to be very sleight of hand. So again, this one is that corn syrup, water, isopropyl alcohol. That one you can't mess up. Give it a try. Post pictures of anything you do in terms of density columns, or if you go out and you check out MSDS sheets for other liquids that maybe you want to try stacking on top of each other and see the density differences. Oh, another fun thing to do is to put in objects in here and see where they stop in your density column. So if you end up getting all of those things on top of each other, then try dropping in a paperclip. Try dropping in a grape tomato. Try dropping in, you know, a bunch of little things and see where they stop. Maybe like one of those little plastic beads or, or a penny and just see if they stop at any specific level and that'll give you an idea of that object's density as well. Pretty cool home experiment, especially to kill time in COVID if you happen to be like quarantining or isolating yourself. Kind of fun chemistry application to do at home. If you happen to like this video, it would be just ducky if you would hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. That would be absolutely quacktastic. Thank you. Until the next time. No ducks. No glory.